By the end of this video, you'll know how to sculpt a glass soda bottle in Fusion 360. Before I get started with sculpting, I just want to make you aware that I started a weekly Fusion 360 challenge, which will be posted every Monday. To see this week's challenge and to find out all the details on how to participate, simply click that link below in the video description. To get started, we're going to need to enter the Sculpt environment. I'll click on the purple Create Form icon in the toolbar. I'm going to start off by creating the middle section of the bottle as a T-spline cylinder, and then I'll shape the top and bottom of the cylinder. I'll activate the Cylinder tool from the Create drop-down list. Then, you'll see that we have to choose one of the origin planes to draw the circle on. I'll select the XY origin plane, and then I'll click on the center origin. As I drag out with my mouse, you'll see that the circle appears, and we can type out the dimension. I'll type out 55 millimeters for the dimension. Then, as I hit the Enter key, you'll see that the cylinder is created, and we can define the height and the number of faces. Now we can also redefine the width of the cylinder should you decide on a different dimension or if the dimension changed on you. In the cylinder dialog box, make sure the width is set to 55 millimeters. The diameter faces are set to 8. I'll change the height to 100 millimeters. And I'll set the height faces to 6. Remember that when working with T spline bodies, it's always easier to add more faces and edges later on, so I'm just going to start out with a small number of faces. At this point, we don't need any symmetry, and we want to create a new body with this cylinder command. So I'll click OK in the dialog box. I'll now use the edit form command to make the top taper of the bottle. If you're not familiar with each edit form command, then click that link in the upper right hand corner to watch the edit form video. I'm going to double click on the top edge because double clicking will select the entire edge. Then I'll right click on the edge and I'll select Edit Form. Before adding the taper, I'm going to create a new section here that we'll then use to taper. I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key on my keyboard and I'll drag the blue single directional arrow upwards 10 millimeters. Next, I'll drag the corner manipulator inward to make the taper and I'll move it inward by a factor of 0.75. It's important to note that 0.75 is not a dimension in millimeters, but a percentage of the distance from the edge to the center. So if I type out 1, then it's a straight edge, and if I type out 0, you'll see that the edge runs all the way into the center point. Therefore, by typing out 0.75, we're actually moving inward one fourth or one quarter of the way to the center point. To create the rest of the top taper of the bottle, I'm going to repeat the last two steps two more times. Once again, I'll hold down the Option slash Alt key and I'll drag the blue single directional arrow towards the top. Then, I'll drag the corner manipulator inward and I'll type out a factor of 0.75. And I'll do the same thing one more time. Now obviously, I figured out these dimensions and factors beforehand, but if you're working with T-spline bodies in the sculpt environment, then you'll have to play around with the shape and size. I find it often works best to experiment and to not be afraid of messing up, as you can always hit the undo command to revert to the previous step. 
With the top still selected, I'll hold down the Option slash Alt key and I'll drag the single directional arrow upward. I'll make this first one 10 millimeters and then I'll release the Option Alt key and the single directional arrow and I'll hold down the Option Alt key once again and I'll drag this up 15 more millimeters. Now that the top shape is defined, I'll refine it further by inserting some more edges, giving me more control of the shape of the top. I'm going to click the OK button to close the Edit Form command. Then, I'll activate the Insert Edge command from the Modify drop-down list. Once the Insert Edge command is activated, I'll make sure the new edge is inserted at a factor of 0.5, which means that this new edge is 50% or halfway from the selected edge to the next edge. And then I'll click OK. I'll now insert two more edges, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'll double click on the edge that I just created, which selects it all the way around. Then I'll right click and select Repeat Insert Edge. I'll leave the insert location at 0.5, but I'll change the insertion side from single to both. This will create lines or edges on both sides. Then I'll click OK to confirm the two new edges. At this point, I'm going to look at the model from the front view so it's easier to reshape the top edges. I'll right click to select the edit form command. Then I'll click to select one of the faces of the second row and I'll hold down the shift key. Then I'll double click to select the face next to it, which selects the entire row. I'll keep holding down the shift key and I'll select one of the faces in the third row. Then I'll double click to select the face next to it. Now you'll see that because I already had a face selected above it as I double clicked, it went ahead and added the faces in this vertical row. Now if you need to deselect faces that you didn't want selected, then simply click on them while you continue to hold down that shift key. I'll go ahead and deselect all the faces in this vertical row. Then I'm going to drag the universal scaling icon or the center circle to reshape these faces. And I'll type out 1.2 millimeters for the dimension. Then I'll click the OK button to confirm the new shape. Now that we've spent some time reshaping the top of the bottle, we'll want to close off and shape the bottom of the bottle. I'm just going to use the orbit tool to look at the bottom of the model. Then I'll double click to select the entire edge and I'll right click to activate the edit form tool. I'm going to drag the edge down 2.5 millimeters by selecting the single directional arrow. Then I'll hold down the option slash alt key and I'll drag the corner manipulator inward, adding a factor of 0.85. I'll then hold down the Option slash Alt key once again, and I'll drag the corner manipulator inward about a fourth of the way. I'll release all the keys, and then I'll hold down the Option Alt key one last time, and I'll drag the corner manipulator inward once again about a quarter of the way. With the inner edge still selected, I'm going to use the single directional arrow and I'll drag it up 2.5 millimeters to create this indent on the bottom of the bottle. Then I'll click OK in the Edit Form dialog box. I'll now right click on the selected edge, so be sure to double click on the innermost edge if you don't still have it selected and I'll select the fill hole command from the right click menu. 
To get the results to not look so crazy, we'll have to change the fill hole mode to the collapse option, which makes sure that all the T-spline faces converge or collapse to the middle. Then I'll click OK to confirm the results. I now have a pretty simple bottle, and I will continue on by giving the center body of the bottle some more curvature. To do so, I'm going to delete some of the edges so there are less moving parts. I'm going to double click on one of these middle edges, I'll hold down the shift key, and then I'll double click on the next edge. Then I'm going to simply click the delete key on my keyboard which deletes the edges. I'll now double click on this bottom edge line to select it. I'll right click to activate the edit form command and then I'll drag the center circle or the universal scaling icon inward. I'll type out a factor of 0.5 and I'll click the OK button in the dialog box. One trick that I want to show you when you're refining sculpted bodies is the fact that you can slide edges around to reshape the overall design. For example, if I think that this curve or indent in the bottom of the bottle goes in just a little bit too far, then I can slide this edge towards the top. I'll double click on the edge to select it once again, and I'll right click to select the slide edge tool. You'll see the slide edge tool gives a nice wire preview of how the shape will be affected, which can be pretty helpful as you reposition the edge. I'll type out negative 0.2 to move the edge upward, and then I'll click OK in the dialog box to confirm the results. To wrap up this video, I'll hit the finish form button in the toolbar, then I'll use the thicken command from the create dropdown list to turn this T-spline body into a solid body. I'll type out 1.4 millimeters for the thickness, and then I'll change the direction to symmetric so the thickness is added to both the inside and the outside of the surface body. If you made it to the end of this video, then please let me know by commenting below some suggestions of what you'd like to see me sculpt in Fusion 360. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please click that thumbs up icon and click on that playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch more sculpting tutorials. If you're new to the channel, be sure to click that red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.